Hello, my name is Dr. Juli Navoa. I'm a practicing cosmetic OBGYN from El Paso, Texas. The documentary that you will see will cover a particular type uh, procedure, a unique procedure known as tumescent liposuction, also known as awake tumescent liposuction. It is a technique where local lidocaine is used to anesthetize tissue without the need of IV sedation or general anesthesia. This technique was originally developed by Dr. Jeffrey Klein in 1986 and has been used in over half a million procedures with an unprecedented level of safety and benefit over general anesthesia. Este es un procedimiento que mundialmente, mundialmente ha visto sus beneficios obteniendo seguridad al paciente, haciéndolo en un lugar seguro, en un lugar médico con todos los requerimientos en caso de alguna emergencia con un cirujano preparado, calificado y con la anestesia local adecuada, puede funcionar de maravilla. Most OBGYNs, general surgeons, plastic surgeons, and anesthesiologists know very little about the benefits of tumescent lidocaine or tumescent techniques. I have been using tumescent lidocaine in order to do both cosmetic and OBGYN procedures since 2006. Specifically on the side related to cosmetic surgery, I've been doing breast augmentations on fully awake or fully conscious patients using the awake breast augmentation technique developed by Dr. Anil Gandhi. Este procedimiento se realiza con mínimo dolor y da muchos beneficios que son inmediata recuperación que puede irse el paciente a su casa en una hora, media hora, dos horas. Poco dolor, después tomará medicinas para el dolor y es el beneficio de la liposucción con anestesia general o con anestesia local es muy bien. Despite um, having performed over 650 breast augmentation procedures, the majority of board certified plastic surgeons and anesthesiologists feel that the awake techniques are inferior or actually are concerning uh, or of a concern in comparison to general anesthesia. The purpose of this documentary is to show the benefits and safety of awake liposuction. En algunos casos estas células de grasa las utilizamos y eh, tienen un procedimiento especial para transferirlas como trasplante a otra parte del cuerpo, que puede ser glúteos, puede ser senos, puede ser la cara, en alguna, como usados como fillers en alguna parte de la cara, o también con los nuevos avances de la medicina regenerativa, los mandamos al laboratorio y los hematólogos y los biólogos especialistas preparan estas células para usarlas como stem cells o células regenerativas en algún tipo de enfermedades o simplemente para rejuvenecer y regenerar todas nuestras células en, de los sistemas corporales. Las células madre son células que se diseñaron en nuestro cuerpo para poder regenerar tejidos dañados, tejidos que durante el proceso de la vida han sufrido alguna lesión, algún daño. Tanto en pacientes con enfermedades de difícil control, tales como las complicaciones por diabetes, problemas vasculares, eh, problemas neurológicos, enfermedades degenerativas, pero tiene una aplicación muy intensa en el área de cosmética facial. Entonces, las células madre están ahí para poder este, ayudar a esos tejidos a suplir lo que se ha perdido, lo que se ha destruido durante el proceso de la vida. El caso específico de liposucción, normalmente ese tejido se tira, se desecha y se va a la basura. Entonces se puede utilizar para tratar diferentes problemas de salud. Los procedimientos de liposucción es, es muy conveniente poder utilizar esta, esta grasa que se obtiene de la liposucción para de ahí poder tener acceso a través de diferentes procedimientos este, de laboratorio, hacer la separación y la extracción de estas células y entonces poderlas utilizar en los pacientes, ya sea con algún padecimiento específico, alguna enfermedad crónica degenerativa o como una terapia de rejuvenecimiento facial donde tiene muy buenos resultados. Entonces hay que aprovechar si alguien quiere mejorar su estética, su figura, pues aprovechar la grasa que normalmente se va a ir a la basura in order to demonstrate the benefits and safety of awake liposuction, I have volunteered to be 
a patient, the actual patient, for a live webcam broadcast that will be performed tomorrow. I will also be narrating the procedure and will not be given any preoperative or interoperative medication in order to maintain informed consent. My good friend Dr. Alvarez from Juarez, Mexico, a board certified plastic surgeon, will be performing the procedure on me. And we hope to be able to uh, better educate the general public and more specifically my colleagues who are not performing away procedures in order to give an alternative to general anesthesia. Es un eh, placer para mí poder hacer esa cirugía mañana y demostrar el beneficio del procedimiento con anestesia local. I hope you enjoy our documentary. Thank you very much. Hello. We're starting the IV right now for the procedure. And you're going to uh, paint me next. Uh, giving a significant amount of fluid IV. And with tumescent latticate or tumescent formula, you're doing the absolute opposite. We're giving a significant amount of fluid in the subcutaneous tissue or in the fatty tissue to distend it. And we're giving very little I IV fluid. So right now my IV is running at what's called TKO or just to keep the vein open. Uh, and then um, Dr. Alvarez will uh, infiltrate with tumescent uh, fluid approximately four liters of tumescent anesthetic into my tissue, which will, if I don't already look pregnant, he's going to make me look pregnant. That's the, the key to this particular procedure and why once uh, the tissue is numb or anesthetized, it requires no pain medication. And as I said, up to this point, I have not received any pain medication or, or any uh, anesthetics uh, to, to help calm me. I, I am doing this on uh, how we do all of our awake procedures in order to maintain informed consent, in order for the patient to be able to discuss uh, their needs or their desires with the doctor at all times and, and without the patient uh, uh, being in any way affected by the medication that's being given. So, right now, it's tissue above the fascia of the muscle, and um, the more you apply, the more of the tumescent uh, pressure that you cause, the, the better the infiltration of, the, of all of the tissue. For larger patients, uh, we use um, more fluid, obviously, and we try to get as close to the fascia as we can in order to numb the tissue at that point which numbs the uh, nerves all the way to the skin. So all I'm feeling right now is that the uh, movement of the cannula and a little bit of stinging sensation with, uh, which is associated with the lidocaine and that's an expected effect. So far uh, my heart rate is what? Yes, let, let's see the, the monitor. That is 87. 87. And, Since 99% uh, of the CO, CO since um, epinephrine is added to the solution, epinephrine or adrenaline causes the heart rate to raise, which is normal. Common side effect to this also is not only elevated heart rate, but um, shaking of the patient. This is a normal effect and lasts approximately 30 minutes following full infiltration of the, uh, of the anesthetic solution. Now again, all I'm feeling is some movement, some pressure. And a little bit of stain. Any pain, Dr. Noble? At least 10 minutes. Just a little bit of pressure, that's all. It wouldn't be unusual, however, for my heart rate to go up to 120, which is a normal side effect to the epinephrine that's in the solution. Dr. Alvarez, in order to monitor my uh, um, blood pressure, has placed the blood pressure cuff on my right uh, thigh, excuse me, my right calf. And actually, that blood pressure cuff is more uncomfortable than what he's doing right now on my abdomen. Are uh, usually present in given into message procedures. It's the receptors for pain that are that are anesthetized, and that's why you only feel pressure and movement. Okay, would you use this pain? Hold I feel the vibration and pressure. And it's and it's and it's kind of it's tickling over here. A little tickling. Okay. If you feel pain, please call me. Okay. And the, as you see, the fat is going out. 
right here. Okay. And then we are going to collect 300, 300 to 500 cc of, of fat to send to the lab, to the hematologist lab, to make the procedure, the special procedure to isolate the stem cells from the fat cells of Dr. Novoa. And then in, in four hours, we are going to reapply in a IV, IV solution and on his face, this part with the stem cells. So, uh, the most important thing at this part is the pain of the patient. As you see, the face of the Dr. Novoa is pain free. And, and we are working and we are getting out the fat from his abdominal area. And as I said before, um, Dr. Alvarez has a pressure cup on my calf for measuring my blood pressure, and that actually is producing more discomfort than the liposuction is what you're doing right now. And so all I'm feeling right now is just the movement and, uh, and the vibration of the micro air, which helps to break up the tissue better. If you can hear in the background, the heart rate is somewhere in the 80s or 90s, and it's pretty straightforward. But that, that wasn't even a bother. And this is also very important in a, in, a, in a safety issue. The patient being fully awake is able to tell the doctor exactly what they're feeling at all times. And therefore, if the patient all of a sudden feels something that's unusual or uncomfortable, they can immediately tell the doctor what's going on. In the past, under general anesthesia, it has been known that doctors place the cannula, can accidentally place the cannula, uh, the suction cannula, in the wrong place and have actually penetrated the abdominal wall and placed the cannulas inside of the abdomen, in the, in the pelvic area, or, um, and have started to suck out intestinal fat or, or, or damage the intestines themselves. This is uh, obviously not something that's, that's uh, desired. It's actually an emergency situation where the patient has had to be open and um, uh, surgeons that are specialized in, in handling the repairs of the intestines have had to come in and repair these particular uh, uh, injury. It's going to be a good approach because no more scars. And, and we are going to use the same scar. Another important thing is that uh, Dr. Alvarez has to stop at a certain point related to liposuction of the, uh, the skin. The skin naturally has a layer of, of fat on it. You do not want to take all the fat that you can off the skin because it makes you look distorted and similar to uh, cellulite. We are going to apply the local anesthesia on his breast area, uh, little by little. Me ponen la anestesia, por favor. Vamos a poner tal vez un litro y un litro, Julio, o a lo mejor medio y medio. Medio, medio. medio. Preparamos cuatro, se usó uno en el, un lado del abdomen, otro en el otro. Y todavía nos sobran dos, pero vamos a ver. Pero en el caso de Tomesen, along with general anesthesia, you're able to, uh, uh, that anesthetic effect lasts for two to three hours after the surgery, and the patient comes out of general anesthesia uh, not feeling anything because their, their tissues are still numb. As in, um, uh, and that's the benefit to using Tomesen anesthetic along with general anesthesia. Another patient, another type of patients who likes this procedure is the people that has fear to the general anesthesia. So it's good options for that type of patients because it's more awake and more, and more safety procedure without the side effects of the general anesthesia. And remember, this is an uh, operating room with uh, has, who has a, all the safety rules that uh, needs all the healthy regulations, the old regulations that we need for do a, a general anesthesia, general procedures, just in case uh,
compared to some. You got Dr. Alvarez uh, has a fully staffed ambulatory center set up for emergency and she especially associated with general anesthesia. And uh, in Texas, I, I perform these procedures in an office-based search, uh, search center, which was called a level three um, uh, anest uh, office anesthesia uh, licensure under my uh, under my license as a as a doctor in Texas. Measured by hour. So this uh, anesthesia that I am applying right now is one hour after we apply the uh, abdominal anesthesia. So it's like a, almost like a new procedure, a new patient. And, and, and it's a very safety procedure. Some patient said this is the holy, the holy anesthesia because it's a uh, almost a miracle that the patient is talking and completely awake and the surgery is done only with the sleep of the... That last one where he was, uh, whatever area was numbing, it actually felt like someone had just bit the nipple, but that's about as bad as it got, just for a, a little, like a, a half a second, and now it's completely comfortable again. And what I'm feeling is just movement and some pressure, and that's pretty much it. Men, men don't generally, um, well, they're much more accepting of their physical appearances. You know, they, they really, uh, they're not as, uh, don't come to the, off, the cosmetic doctor's office for cosmetic surgery as often as women do. Uh, but the, one of the most embarrassing things for men is to have gynecomastia or, or uh, breast, breast, and especially in heavy set uh, gentlemen. And so this is an excellent technique to do a very safe and effective procedure while awake for the removal of fat tissue with minimal discomfort in men that have this particular problem. Now as I said before, the semester solution does not completely anesthetize the tissue. I can feel him rubbing uh, across my skin so pressure sensors are still, uh, are not anesthetized, but pain. I, when he first put the cannula in, I felt three little pinches, and that was what I felt, and pretty much that was it. Now, I know that he's moving that around, but all I'm feeling is like a movement uh, right up to my shoulders. Kind of like someone's tapping me with their finger. That's what I'm feeling right now. I look at the face of uh, Julian. Is showing no pain. The face, I think, mean, also in the eyes, is showing no pain. I think it's really common in the cosmetic uh, surgeons because we consider fat cells for lipo uh, fat transfer to be like liquid gold. We, that's what we call it, liquid gold. And I get excited too when I am seeing all the fats that I'm able to uh, suck out of the patient, especially if she wants to have a fat transfer, like for the Brazilian butt lift. This is here around the nipples that have to match, but not around the soil, and then the right side is completely hard because of the anesthesia and the back. So I'm going to work one minute just here around the nipples, and then switch for the right side. Now we have maybe 500 cc of fat cells. So we can put a lot in the breast. Okay. Now it's better natural, not uh, completely skinny. We always do a double check. Um, my assistants, there's always two of them when we prepare these bags to make sure that they're for put, putting in the, uh, the appropriate amount of, um, of medicines in each one. So there's a double check system or even a triple check system to make sure that we're not making an error when we're creating the tumescent solution. Because with uh, uh, lidocaine uh, levels at, at this high, that if you did make a mistake, it could, uh, it could be toxic, it could be life-threatening. So we always check to make sure we're using the appropriate amount.
or uh, and, and placing that in the bags. I feel like a baby. <laughs> this is this is not fun. This is awkward. <laughs> Now here I feel, see that's a contraction of the muscle. Uh, I feel a little bit of pain, pressure, but there, there's an automatic contraction. See, I feel a contraction of the muscle uh, for the buttocks. This does not usually happen in either the abdomen or, or the breast tissue. Who took that picture? <laughs> Damn it, I knew I couldn't trust them. Are you okay, Doctor? So far, yeah, but I know that the buttocks is the hardest to see this contraction. Is it burn? Yeah, it burns, but the contraction, it's more the muscle spasm, but right now it's, it's okay. I'm, I'm doing okay. It's pretty bad when you put your um, Galaxy phone in your pocket and sit down and nothing happens to it. So that means that you're flat as a board. So I guess, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can put my phone in my back pocket and it will never get damaged. And I sit down, it will never get damaged. <laughs> and you want to inject it into the muscle. And that's why it's more uncomfortable. You're actually not doing a liposuction uh, to liposuction. I mean, li to liposuction to lipotransfer. Your, your goal is to try to get some of that into the, between the fascia and the muscle. So it's hard to numb the muscle. You have to take it, take it in stride. But it's not, it's not really that uncomfortable. The left side was more uncomfortable than the right. So if you want to have a J-Lo butt, um, you're going to need about 500 per cheek her butt cheek. Now, that one, I feel like it's hitting the, the sciatic nerve or something, because I'm feeling the, the, the electrical shock all the way down my leg. It's not unusual to take fat from the, from the abdomen or the buttocks and, and uh, traditionally to inject it into the face. They're going to use those stem cells as a rejuvenation to the face, uh, which again, this technology is not readily available in the United States yet. That's it. That's it. Hi, Hi doctor. All right, um, we're out of the OR. The, the normal protocol is that after leaving the OR, we observe a patient between 30 minutes and an hour, depending on what their vital signs look like. Usually, if there are going to be any symptoms or problems related to the lidocaine, it's going to start about a half an hour after the procedure. And usually, it's very simple. It's nausea or occasional vomiting. Um, also, because the patient is uh, tightly wrapped, um, Dr. Alvarez kept the port sites open on purpose in order to allow the natural fluid that collects and bathes um, fat tissue, we keep those port sites open so that the fluid can actually leave the body because if not, it's not reabsorbed uh, quickly enough to be able to, uh, to keep the patient uh, fit. If, if, you keep, if you close the port sites and don't wrap the patient, then the patient collects with fluid. So we're doing two things. First of all, we're wrapping, which is normal, and we're keeping the port sites open so that the fluid will come out. And that's usually a blood-tinged fluid for about 24 hours. So that's the plan for right now. They're allowing me to rest, and they've, I've already ordered lunch, which is going to be Wendy's. So that's the plan for right now. We're doing a th uh, thermage, which is a radio frequency collagen rejuvenating and skin tightening uh, procedure. So uh, we're down to the last 56 units. I just wanted to do a quick uh, uh, video record of this particular part of the procedure. Following this, uh, the stem cells should be uh, ready, or almost ready. So in about an hour or so, we're going to be injecting stem cells. Ya tenemos listos el extracto de células madre obtenidas de la grasa del doctor Novoa. Están en esa solución. Y aparte hay dos jeringas que se van a aplicar en su cara. Y es una cosecha de varios cientos de millones de células uh, mesenquimales derivadas del tejido brazo. Esperemos que lo regeneren bastante. Uh, research has, has suggested that stem cells as the fundamental basic cells of growth and uh, differentiation can be used uh, or used to rejuvenate tissue that's been damaged. 
uh, research right now is into um, rejuvenation of brain cells, renal cells, and uh, for cosmetic purposes, rejuvenation of the entire body. And so today we're, we're they're preparing this uh, IV solution uh, to see whether uh, to rejuvenate my body after having had the liposuction and the garage done today. It's been three hours uh, since we completed the surgery and uh, I've had lunch already. They're doing the stem cell therapy. Uh, I have not taken any pain medication uh, either during the sur before, during, or since the surgery. What I'm feeling right now is a little bit of, uh, of uh, a burning sensation on, on my ribs, similar to what we tell our patients about, that it's similar to doing sit-ups, a lot of sit-ups and a little, a slight pinch on, on the left hand side uh, near the 10th and the 11th rib. My, my chest actually doesn't hurt too much although because we have it compressed it's uh, ballooning up and it looks kind of like it's collecting fluid but it's not. And um, I bruise easily so I have a lot of bruises. Most patients don't have uh, a bruising appearance and part of that has to do with the fact that my platelet count is at 121 rather than at uh, 200,000 and uh, so that's that's an explanation so I'm feeling really good the part that hurts the most right now is my butt because I've been sitting on it for about <laughs> an hour and 15 minutes so that she could do the uh, radio frequency th uh, therapy and uh, actually that hurt more than the <laughs> than the entire liposuction for procedure because we wanted to set it up at a high high number if you take it at the uh, the standard number you barely feel anything but I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to come back to Juarez uh, with, my, uh, with my good friend Dr. Uh, Alvarez. So uh, I wanted to get the most bang for my buck and so I went ahead and told him to set it at the highest, higher setting of four. We are now at the point to um, do stem cell rejuvenation in the face. Dr. Alvarez is going to um, go ahead and numb my face in certain points and then um, inject stem cells in, um, as a substitution for fat, which we traditionally have been using fat transfer uh, to fill in spaces in the face, but today we're going to be using stem cells. One shot, William. It feels aquí like sí, sí the injection estar. of Juvederm and my lip is, my upper lip is getting numb. ¿Tampoco? Aquí en el cuarto. This is only a local anesthesia. This gives a sensation of uh, Botox injection. And my upper lip is completely numb now. My upper lip feels about 10, ten pounds. <laughs> You're starting to sound like, like it. It feels like it's about this big. I can't feel my nose. <laughs> <laughs> we have here the stem cells from Dr. Novoa. And this is going to be purchased in two to three months with the result. A little pinch. Sentiment regenerative cells. So, this is going to transform and to improve little by little the dermis. 
Jesús. Dice María. This liquid has uh, thousands, maybe millions of stem cells. So this is going to improve the whole area. And with the IV solution, it's going to improve the internal organs. This is not act like a filler, it's just to stimulate the thermis and put the cells on the right place for starting work. How you feel Julio? Good. Good? Yes. Uh, okay. The Steam cells finish, almost finish. So maybe in 10 minutes we are going to get out the IV solution and finally Julio can go to home, go home to El Paso for recovery time and relax the rest of the day. Thank you. Okay, Julio. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you so much. Welcome. Tomorrow, tomorrow, see you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's time to go home. It's uh, it's 6 p.m. here. I think we finished at 12. What time? 12. 12. 12. It's been six hours. I haven't taken any pain medication. The only thing that's bothering me right now are my areolas or my nipples, and they're just hurting like somebody's pinching them. Other than that, I'm good to go. And so I'm going to see how long I can go without taking any pain medication. And we're going to head on back to uh, El Paso now. Hi, my name is Dr. Julian Avo. I am a cosmetic OBGYN from El Paso, Texas. A couple of days ago, we were here in the studio and we were going over uh, the plans to do an awake liposuction, which would have been planned for yesterday. And we were able to complete the procedure without any problems or any complications. Today, we're going to go over the post-operative feelings or basically me as being the patient. And so I just wanted to go over what happened after the procedure. After the procedure, I was um, still feeling a little bit of pressure and numbness for approximately six hours. I took one Vicodin to be able to sleep well. And this morning, I actually went to my office and saw 36 patients. I'm wearing right now an abdominal binder and uh, some um, chucks in order to be able to catch the fluid because we left the port sites open in order to be able to drain. This is part of the awake liposuction procedure. So uh, the only thing that really bothers me right now is the fat transfer to the buttocks because it feels like I've done about maybe 300 or 400 heavy squats, so it's a little bit difficult to walk. After the uh, procedure was completed, we went on to do a, ver a revolutionary type of procedure that's not available in the United States yet. It's called uh, stem cell rejuvenation, where they took the actual stem cells from my adipose tissue or my fat tissue, processed it through a, a special um, process and were able to isolate the stem cells and then they, um, they injected it back in through an IV and used some of it to basically treat my face for a facial rejuvenation. Also uh, they did a, a thermage which is a radio frequency facial treatment and so we're going to see how um, I respond to the treatment in about six to eight weeks um, following this particular uh, documentary. I will post some pictures on our website as well as on YouTube and hopefully you will be able to get a better understanding of, the, of what stem cell rejuvenation is all about, especially since it's not available in the United States. I wanted to thank everyone for taking the opportunity to watch our 
pre-op uh, documentary as well as the actual footage on Ustream, which is still available on Ustream uh, related to the surgery that we did yesterday in an unedited form. And uh, hopefully you'll appreciate the fact that awake liposuction can be done and is extremely safe and effective for um, specific types of patients such as myself. Thank you very much.